It's Friday. It's 9 o'clock. That means our feature Friday segment is here on KCMO. And, of course, you're trying to weave it into the news of the week. And a guy who's done a debate or two from the moderating side of things is our next guest, uh, John Holt, Fox 4. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Happy Friday. Yes. Same to you. Yeah. Good to be back on Friday feature. Yes. This is my second visit, right? Yes. I think you were here, gosh, I want to say it was like February. It was a while ago. It sounds right. So it's before before or after the Super Bowl. Yes. Right around then. It was right around then. But, you know, I thought to myself, I said, all right, who can I get in who's been around these debates before? Obviously, you have. Um, I want to say, geez, I mean, uh, the first time I saw you in a debate or moderating a debate was 2018 Sharice Davids, Kevin Yoder. You did that, right? Yes, yes. I was part of that. Uh, We had a couple of folks of us who were moderating an interesting debate uh, that we didn't think would happen. Yes. You know, and, and, and I'll never forget... Uh, we, it was in our newsroom. Our studio was being completely redone at the time. And I was there in the bullpen, by yes, the way. Yes, you were. Yes. And and so I, I'll never forget, it's really as a moderator or anybody who's on the inside of these debates, what you see behind the scenes can be fascinating and tell a tale. And I'll never forget Congressman Yoder at the time yeah. saying as they were sitting down and getting their microphones put on, nice to finally meet you. He said that to Sharice. Yes, and I thought it was uh, very telling of where we had been and getting getting her to agree to a debate, and and she finally did. My hunch then, as it is today, is that they had done their polling. They saw that she had enough of a lead that it was okay to go ahead and do it because it was, as you recall, a week before. Yes, it was early voting was already well underway. Yes, it was late in the process, and so. you know, and and the debate went off fine. I I love doing them. It's mm-hmm. a difficult role, I will say. I whether you agree or not, or, or like the network or not, whoever I, I have an empathy for moderators on a stage that large. I mean, mm-hmm. millions of people globally. Everything you say is being scrutinized and followed, um, and so I have empathy for for any of those moderators. Uh, gosh, the debate, uh, who was it, was moderating the debate that Trump, uh, he had a hard time controlling. I think that was... That was Chris Wallace. That was Chris Wallace, who's an excellent interviewer. That was the first debate of 2020. But what I'll say about that is Chris Wallace's ego is so damn big, he couldn't get himself out of the way. He made himself part of it. He did. Well, and partly he had to, Mm -hmm. to to keep the, the candidates focused on, you know, whose turn it is and... So on and so forth, but but that was that was part of the format. Yes, and he had to know going in, this is going to happen, right? I think we, everybody did. So, uh, but but last night's format was much different, and I think worked. Yeah, I know you think it worked to Trump's favor, and I tend to agree mm-hmm. because you know how he is. As, yeah, he, as as try, try as you might to get him to you know focus on just let the other candidate talk, and then you can jump in. He had no choice. He had no part. choice. Yeah. I thought the Mike thing worked out actually pretty well. I thought so, too. Um, it worked out, I think, better for him. But I just think from the moderator perspective, it worked out. The American yes. people get to decide, hey, here's what each guy says. The moderators don't have to say, sir, you're going to get your turn. Right. Like, that is just beyond annoying. Um, I thought that as a result, the moderators, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, did pretty well last night. Yeah, they, they were fine. I, I mean, I think there was a lot of ang- angst about, okay, this is on CNN. Yes. And this is a network that's going to try to do what it can to help President Biden. I thought they were pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, if there was an attempt to to help, it, it, maybe early on it became, eh, let's just, let's just go with the flow here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I noticed that the questions were scripted. Mm-hmm. They were written down. Um, and I, that's a good, I think it probably smart, but there also has to be a bit of nuancing there when you ask a question, a, particularly a follow-up question. Obviously, you're not going to script that. Uh, so you have to be able to nuance. You're listening to the candidate. Here's what I need to follow up with. A good moderator has to be a good listener, especially when the rules allow you yeah. to follow up. And I believe, I believe the rules did in this mm-hmm. case. You know, I didn't even hear, I heard some follow-ups, but a lot of it, too, was just following up with the same question that the candidate did not want to answer, that, right? Very true, and you're right. Both candidates, at times, would completely ignore the question ignore the question, and focus on something either that had been asked prior or, you know, I'm going to go in this direction, 
And then you have 50 seconds left. Here's my question again. And that's good. That's what a moderator should do. You didn't answer my question, basically, yeah. is what, yeah. what it came down to. And, and the one question that stood out to me on that, where neither of them really answered, was about child care. Right. I would have loved to have heard their plans on child care. Um, you know, I have my opinions on that in terms of how you fix the issue. But regardless, both guys were asked the question and neither of them really answered it. Right. Now, it's a complex issue, but it they is. just each talked about, you know, whatever they wanted to talk about. And yeah. the moderators followed up. But then in the end, they realized they weren't going to get the answer. So just move on at that yeah, point. Yeah, at that point, time's up. You've got to move on because you're just you're just going to give them time to continue to filibuster, I yeah. guess is the term. Right. We're just I'm filling up this time with what I want to talk about. Um, and I know that, that there was debate prep on both sides. They had different approaches. Mm-hmm. Biden holed up at Camp David and that went through the mock debates. Trump, this time, they had policy briefings or so it's reported. Uh, different approach to it. Uh, pff, boy, I'm not sure holding up at Camp David was the right approach now, now, now that we've seen the end result. I was struck by how strong his invitation on video was, how strong the president's State of the Union was, and how he struggled last night. Yeah. I mean, it was a different was guy from the State of the Union. Yes. Completely different Very guy. So. No doubt about it. John Holt is here on KCMO, of course, uh, Fox 4. You know, your four-star politics show, of course, you've been doing. How many years is that on air now? Well, you know, it's, uh, we started, that's a great question. We started, I want to say, three years ago uh, in, in conjunction with the SAR. Okay. Uh, four-star politics. Uh, my buddy Dave Helling decided it was time to retire. And bless his heart, he stayed on longer than he had planned they they didn't want to let him go and we didn't either uh so when he left the star uh we invited him to stay on as a moderator he chose he he wants to spend time with grandkids and and get i know i think he still does weekend review with nick my buddy nick haynes uh but so we re re rebranded the show as for the people sort of separated ourselves from the newspaper which they were fine with uh, and so that show's been on the air, gosh, a little over, well, about a year and a half now because it, it launched right after the first Super Bowl of two in a row. We waited to launch it, and then now uh, we're on a roll with For the People. Maybe we should keep it going at least long enough for the three-peat. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, it just yes, occurred to me. Exactly wow. right. Huh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you're bringing in a lot of the political folks, the candidates when they're running. Yeah. You get them in the studio. Uh, like Jay Ashcroft did our Politics in a Pint. He was with you. That day. That day. Yes. So you get to record these folks. The show airs on Sunday mornings on Fox 4. What is your sense on, especially the Missouri side, where there's a lot more action this year? Right. Just kind of the political climate, where things are at in that governor's race in particular. It's it's going to be an expensive primary. Yes. You know, I think they may, spend more, they may spend more in the primary because I think the, the winner of the primary is likely going mm-hmm. to be the next governor. So the money's flowing both Outside and inside money. By outside, I mean PACs. Um, and I, what's interesting to me about that race is how Kehoe has surged yeah, um, and has been the one debate holdout. We've worked very hard to try to get all three of them, along with our affiliate in St. Louis, Fox 2, and then our affiliate in Springfield, to do a statewide debate. We've had several dates picked out. Um, and the one holdout so far, and I asked him about it when he was on our show, as you may have seen. What'd he say? He, he said, we are booked up. We, we planned these, this bus tour that he was on I know, I know. every it's day ridic- through it's August 6th. And we got sponsors. And, and, and I said, it, it, I tried to push him a little bit on it. And he finally said, oh, we, we like Nexstar. That's our parent company. We, we like those folks. You know, we're still trying to see what we can do. And I said, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, KSDK, another station in St. Louis, is now claiming they're going to hold a debate. And the original thought was he would take part. And now reading, digging down into the details, no, he's not committed to that debate either. But they're going to do the empty podium, which, okay. you know, and I think for, for Mike Kehoe, it'll depend on the polling. It'll depend on where he's at. But he's got a ton of money to spend. He's up on TV way ahead of the, the other two. And if if and you see what the numbers have done, double digits based on name recognition for Jay Ashcroft ha- has now sunk to, to within the margin of error. You know, um, I, I just think it's it's a bad trend we've got across the board in American politics where people who are either the front runners or those who just have the most money don't want to debate. Every single cycle we are getting less debates. I and agree. I think that's a shame for the voter. I, I agree. Think it's, I, and that's. I don't care. Republican, Democrat, I think it's such a disservice to the voter that uh, consultants don't want their clients to debate anymore. 
And candidates, if they're leading, they say, screw it. I don't need to debate. No, and, and even you said it. It's consultants. It's the strategists who say, you know what? You're in a position. Here we are. Here's what our research shows. Here's where we're headed. Don't do it. You yeah. could slip. It could only hurt you. It can only hurt you. That's and, what they always say. And last night maybe is a prime example of why, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the Biden administration, the, the campaign, I should yeah, say, campaign. gambled. Get this out there early. Let's prove our guy is fit and ready to go. And now what's the narrative this morning? But back to your point, in the last few years, we tried, we've tried to get statewide debates with Fox 2 and in St. Louis and have had no luck. Yeah. I mean, no think luck. about it, either side of the state line. Yeah. You know, um, you can't get these folks on a debate stage. I mean, did Laura Kelly and Derek Schmidt really do a debate? I mean, they did some stuff at like the state fair. They did. The one debate I saw uh, that I attended was the Johnson County Bar, yeah. which was on KC, uh, KCPT. Uh, mm-hmm. PBS carried it. Nick Haynes moderated it, did a great job. Yes. Uh, and uh, that was the only one I saw. So, and that, you know, uh, it was it was great because it's unscripted. Yes. You know, the commercials, you, you just watch it, you, the oh predictable, I know. China's coming, you know. Yeah. Uh, immigrants are, I'm just talking about the Mike Kehoe spot that's running right now. Um, debates are unscripted. They're raw. You never know what's going to happen. And that's what voters need to see. And you owe it to, the, you owe it to your voters. You, I just think you owe it to the people to get up there and debate. And, and we're getting less of it. And I don't think it's good at all for, for city, states, anything. Yeah, but you know what? If you're, if you're a strategist, if you're Jeff Rowe or any of the, the, the men and women out there who guide these campaigns, mm-hmm. put, your, put that hat on and I guess I understand it. You're paid to get your guy or gal across the finish line at whatever. Well, but cost. I think I think it's also one of those things where it's like, you know, they make themselves um, more valuable by saying, "Trust us. You need right. us. Don't worry about debates." Right. Don't, you know, it it, make, it gives them more power. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. a part of it as well because there's a lot of money to be made in that space. Point taken. You know? Yeah, no, no question. For a guy who's done a lot of these, John, what is the debate that you have moderated that? sticks out in your mind i think for me it would be the 2016 statewide republican governor's primary uh, back in uh, 2016 right Mm -hmm. and and, uh, we did that from fox 2 in st louis um it was carried statewide uh i went over the day before and and we did the debate that night uh, the next night uh it was that was eric greiton's coming out party that was uh, the first time i had met him and and the state really was getting to know him um, and uh, with uh, Peter Kinder and Eric Brunner, uh, and uh, it was uh, it was or John Brunner. I guess. Yep. It, it was a uh, it was fascinating. It was and, and I was part of a panel, we, we, uh, two or three of us who were moderators. So I maybe got two questions in. Right, yeah. I think we did an hour, and you get a couple of questions in. But uh, I remember coming away from that debate thinking that Eric Greitens is really impressive. Uh, he had just had. I think their second child. Yeah, I think they have two boys. Two boys. And, and he, so he got there. He was one of the last to arrive. And so, and that was the explanation. He'd been not, not, it had not just happened, but within 24 hours. He got two hours, little kids. Yeah. yeah. And so he had just made it over. Um, but, you know, little did we know what lie ahead there. But at any rate, it was, it was a fun hour. And I love doing those kinds of things. And we just haven't had any luck this go around. As you said, they, those statewide kinds of major statewide office debates just don't happen anymore. Yeah. I mean, I try to twist some arms and, and yeah. you know, sometimes, listen, sometimes, too, um, this is just a reality. They don't trust the media, especially on the Republican side. They just yep. will say, I'm not going to deal with these guys or gals. I don't trust them. So I try to say, hey, you know, I do a talk show. You know, it's different from what you do, obviously. People know where I'm at, uh, let's do it on radio. You know, let's do right. something. I'll, I'll, I'll be a moderator. I try to pitch myself, but even for me, it's getting harder. You it's, know, and it's getting and, harder. And you mentioned our candidate conversations on for the people. We've had some trouble at times getting candidates to come in. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is they just aren't sure. And, and we always assure them, look, this is not gotcha. Yeah. This is your chance to answer questions and introduce yourself to a different audience. Yeah. Than, than maybe is sitting there on X Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, reading these tweets or whatever. Uh, It's a conversation, as you do every morning with with your guests. I'm not going to gotcha. I might, you know, we we try to be prepared and we try to point out, for example, if I I have a candidate on and I've had the competitor on before, I might play a clip of what that competitor said and say, all right, what's your position? Yeah, respond. Yeah, I mean, and that's something any candidate should be prepared to do, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to run for office. And it's interesting, for example, Kansas 
Republican Party third congressional district. Yeah. Two newcomers really are the front runners, Reddy and Sirkovich. Uh, we'll have had both of them on. Dr. Reddy was on a few weeks ago. Karen Sirkovich will be on with us next week, next Sunday morning. Uh, and so it's fascinating to give them the opportunity. And, and I suspect Dr. Reddy did great. I'm sure Karen Sirkovich will too. Mm-hmm. The newcomers sometimes are a little more relaxed. You yeah. know, they, they, they have not had the experience with the, the, the political reporters hounding them yeah. as much as maybe the, the, the old guard. No doubt about it. All right. So as you, you know, look at things right now and you look at just kind of where we're at here locally, what's the mm. thing that you're watching? What's the most intrigue to you? I mean, I, I, if I could lean into it on the Missouri side here, I feel like, I don't know how you feel about this, Kansas City plays third fiddle to St. Louis and even the Springfield market. I mean, I hear about how the Springfield market has been getting all the radio and TV ads and I guess because the Republican base is so strong down there, yes. but I feel like that's why that happens. Yes, the buys are made strategically in, for example, the GOP primary. We're yes. just now starting to see. We're just starting to get yes, it in Kansas City. we're starting City. to get the ads here that have been running. And, and I've heard some say, some insiders say that the reason the gap narrowed for Kehoe and, and Ashcroft was the southwest Missouri buys, yeah. that he's been on down there long enough that that's where it began to to narrow. So that's been fascinating. Now that he's on here and in St. Louis, I was in St. Louis last weekend and saw ads there. It's ramping up, and we're going to see a lot more of it. Our sales staff says, bring it on. You know, yeah. although, although our regular advertisers can get bumped, as yes. you know, that's the way it works. But, uh, you know, it's just it's fascinating to see how that plays out, those strategic ad buys. But the thing I'm watching most right now, and, and you and I have talked about this, is the whole Chiefs-Royals thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's your move, Mike Parson. And he had the trophies this past week, uh, yesterday in Jeff City, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if once the primary is over, there's a special session called to maybe discuss some some things. I think he realized, he even said on our air to Emily Manley, our, our Jeff City reporter, anybody who thinks we, we can't provide money for, for these owners is, is wrong. That's just not the way it's played. So Missouri knows it's got to get in the game. It'll be interesting to see how they counter the star bonds that Kansas has thrown out. Yeah, and now it becomes more or less, I hate to say it, but a race to the bottom in some respects. Yeah. However, to your point, Parson is a lame duck. He is. You know, but then again, if you're the legislature, you got to approve it. Right. And is a conservative legislature going to dole out millions of dollars? Right. Especially when the Cardinals on the east side are getting ready to redo their sta- stadium and they're going to want state money. Yeah. That's the thing. You can't just say, well, we'll take care of the Chiefs. Doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. And what about the Royals then? You know, you got three Same teams with the Royals, and so that's that's a fascinating show to watch or to, to play out the theater. Um, you know, and the and it's the border war thing, the machinations from both sides. You know, the Missouri folks. It's a Missouri versus Kansas thing to mm-hmm. some extent. I think you and I have talked about that as well. Uh, I don't think the people behind it that it's an economic development thing for them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I think I've said my, if my money were on it right now, I'd say chiefs go to Kansas Royal stay in Missouri, but really, who, who knows? Yeah. I, I think John Sherman wants to be downtown. Mm-hmm. Don't you? I mean, I, I, just, I, I do. I think that's what he wants. An I, listen, urban baseball experience. I can't see, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I can't see Clark Hunt just saying, you know what? Star bonds will get it done. I st- too many questions over well, there. Well, it's a leverage for Clark Hunt, yeah. right? I mean, no, he's not just going to say, okay, Kansas has star bonds, let's go. Yeah. This, is, this has a long way to go, and I've tried to point that out too. This, we're, we're in the first quarter here, I think. It's not even halftime. Mm-hmm. I, know I, the, I know the clock's running on the, mm-hmm. on the leases, uh, and it takes time to ramp up and build a stadium. But, yeah, yeah. it's, it's – uh, it, we're, we're not done yet. No, it's going to no. get interesting. And, hey, it's good for guys like us. Yes. Listen, that 38 <laughs> cent sales tax going down in flames – was good for our business. Absolutely. Uh, that's just, it, it's that's fodder a for us to chat about. Uh, 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 yes. And, and by the way, one more thing about the debate. Yes. I learned last night, the most important thing I learned, I'm not the only one who fudges my golf handicap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't feel alone in that. Oh, room man.
said, are you buying Trump as a two and a half or Biden as a six? Not when they haven't played or posted scores they in haven't. a long time. That's right. That's right. Trump's last posted score was in 21. Biden's last one was in 18. Yeah, so, no. hey, John Holt, great job. Thanks for being here, Pete, my friend. Great to see you, my friend. Have a great uh, weekend. Gosh, watch them every night, of course, on uh, Fox 4 and then for the people on Sunday mornings.